I was in school, doing, uh, doing my schooling, I was a quite a curious kid. I used to ask uh, questions to my teachers. Most of us uh, do that. I remember one thing. When I asked my math teacher, he was writing uh, a problem on a board. I asked him, sir, how we are getting to this particular equation? How we are solving this? Uh, how we derived the entire thing? He told me very simply, Beta, this is very difficult. You will not understand it. Just write it down as I am writing it down and write it into your paper. You will get a good marks. Huge setback? Okay. Then same thing happened again in physics class. I was very interested in electronics and logic gates. That was the last chapter in our book. So I asked my teacher, Sir, I want to learn this uh, logic gate thing, and, or, and not gates. He said, eh, normally it do not come in your uh, curriculum or not comes in your exams. Leave it. It is not that important. So these are the fundamental technologies which we are uh, keeping the kids away from. There is a huge problem in uh, education system. In some education system especially, some teachers, they do not understand the kids are how creative they are. When I reached college, I was frustrated again because the same kind of problems are getting again and again and again and again. So one day, me and two friends of mine decided to start a company to revolutionize this kind of problem. So what we did, we come from very humble backgrounds. Uh, my parents were the teachers, uh, others was the accountant, and the third one belongs to a very poor farm, farmer family. We do not have money to attract very a sophisticated crowd or to make something which need uh, quite a lot of money to actually start. Uh, and we were hi highly touched when our own college HOD quit his job and joined us. Because he was so passionate about uh, education as we are. So that was the biggest point. And we started seven years ago a product called Electrobricks. So what's Electrobricks? Basically, Electrobricks are self-contained small modules which can be plugged together to make new things, just like that. If you, run, uh, you want to run a motor, you do not need to have an engineer's degree to do that. A three-year-old, a two-year-old can do this. And you can control it. We have sensors, we have logics, we have uh, functions to control these kind of things. We have actuators, we have a lot of uh, sound, lights, and other things. Kids can plug together and make things. Because if you remember, everything you make with your hands, you can remember that. As Nelson said, it is very hard. Only we remember a few percent of actually what we learned in our college, what we read. We can't grasp everything in our mind because obviously we have to learn new things also. You can imagine electrobics like uh, colors, like paints. You have red, blue, green, yellow, lots of colors. And you mix them, you make new colors. You make a painting out of that. You paint a wall out of that. And every time someone does something with it, it's different. No two pieces are like the same. The kids are the most creative ones. When uh, you give them the colors, they can make humongous amount of things you cannot imagine. When initially we thought, we thought uh, the electrobics will be something very simple to make electronics. But the kids have shown us a lot of things. When we give it to the kids which are not able to afford other things, which are not uh, connected with the technology, let me show you a few things which they have come up with. For example, this thing, this was an entire music system. A kid of a seventh grade come to us one day and he has made this. He wanted to make the smiley balls dance to its music. There are light shows. So now the lights are going with it. And a small smiley ball down. And another kid come along and he said, Oh, why not put a sensor in front of it and let's control this thing with some sort of sensory inputs. So we say, okay, we can do something like that also. And maximum programming thing you need, just a screwdriver. If I can adjust that. Now, if I put it here, 
I can make it pause. I can make it stop. Just waving my hand around it. Another kid from Gohati made this. This is a very simple thing, just a box cut out. And what he did, he put a small motor behind that. And when he talks into that, it starts lipsing. Whatever you are saying, it's, it's like that, uh, that thing is talking. Uh, kids love this kind of things to make. It is nothing, nothing, it is nothing critical. Uh, very simple thing, just a motor pushing uh, a thing back, front and back, front and back, front and back, some lights are going on and <laughs> it's fun. And uh, he made it uh, within a few minutes uh, actually. It didn't took him too long. Uh, we obviously m made it out of some uh, uh, glossy paper and everything else. He just uh, cut a hole in a box and made it. A small girl come to us, she made this. She want her jewelry to be secured. She was just four year old. What she did, let me show you. She put a power, put a light sensor, put a motor. And what she got? If I close this, if it is something like that, and I try to approach it, it goes off. Because light cuts off when I come in close of it, and it goes off. Something like that. Took nothing, took nothing, just few minutes and old box. Uh, we called it a candy box, we put some candies. When we showcase this to kids, we put some candies and ask them to run and get the candies. As soon as they come close, the box shuts down. So, and then they find the ways. Oh, we can go from side. Because there is no sensor there. And there were two, two kids who were very intrigued. Because first vending machine placed in our um, railway station. Uh, one day they came to me, say, hey, how, uh, how they take the note inside? They want to know how the note goes inside. And other one was very interesting, he wanted to make a water fountain. So I said, okay, you both make things and let's com combine them. So let me take his cap, put it over here. And if I put some money in it, it will take that and start dispensing the beverage. We can put some paper boat in that. <laughs> and now it is giving the beverage, it will fill the cup up. Cheers. Another boy comes in and made this robot. Just simple logic. If you see something here, you just move this way. If you see something here, just move this way. Nothing fancy. This sensor triggers this motor, this sensor triggers this motor. So nothing is fancy, too fancy. If I place it over here, and uh, let me take this, and I, I wave this thing in front of it, it starts to follow it. And I can make it do the reverse thing also. If I change the order of the motors, this motor is not controlled by that sensor and this motor is not controlled by that sensor. Now, what it will do, if I come close, it will try to go away from me. So, so simple logic, nothing, nothing critical, nothing critical. So these are very simple things that kids can do. So our main goal here, the kids can teach us so many things. They have so many critical ideas, but they need an outlet. They need some place where they can showcase. They need a technology to actually enable them to make things happen. When I see a rickshaw driver, a rickshaw wala, talking on a cell phone, that is something which touches my heart. That is something I feel about. The technology is democratizing everything. It is giving power to everyone. There are a lot of things similar like that. But they are too expensive. The people in the poorest schools, the kids in the poorest schools cannot afford that. I want to make something which is affordable to them. Goal and my main mission is to bring this thing into entire countries, every government school. To make it possible, uh, I have to invent new things, entirely new things. Uh, we designed entire machinery around that to do this thing happen. Because we can't afford to go to big manufacturers and get high volumes in manufacturing. I want this thing to be, become the ABCD. ABCD of new makers, the makers of tomorrow.
Let me leave you with that thought and hope we will do something great. Thank you.